It is a rainy day in the late Cretaceous forest. Despite this and the many dangers that lay within it, a mother dinosaur is busy gathering food. She is a two-meter-long Erictodromius, a species of Ornithischian that feeds and hides amongst the various low-lying plants. She has collected a small amount of ferns in her beak and is now cautiously making her way through the undergrowth back to her nest. This nest is not in a tree or on the ground, however. It is in a burrow that Erictodromius has excavated herself many months ago, using her beak and forelimbs. For the last few weeks, the nest has held her twelve offspring, who have grown fast thanks to their mother constantly bringing them food. This is the mother's second brood. Her first was last year, and despite being inexperienced, she was able to raise two-thirds of them into adulthood. Very successful for a first-time mother. However, this year has been different. The young are only halfway grown, and she has lost seven of the twelve with no idea what predator is picking them off. The young are also at the age where they are beginning to explore the outside of the burrow, making them more vulnerable. Despite these two factors, the mother has to do more trips outside in order to feed her growing young, which also puts herself at risk. Just this morning, she almost walked right into a dromaeosaur. Fortunately, the predator was feeding on a rodent, allowing her to slip away. She arrives home to the burrow's entrance, and squeezes into the relatively dry space. As she crawls into the sleeping area, she immediately sees something is wrong. The chamber is completely empty. None of the five remaining young are here. She drops the ferns in her beak and turns around to crawl out of the burrow. When she exits, she stands as tall as she can and frantically scans the area hoping they are close by. Her head darts around, looking for any sign that they are close a clue as to why they weren't huddled in their nest. Her frantic gaze can't find anything, so she risks giving away her position and calls out to them, a quick series of chirps that she has used in the past to call her young to her. The call rings out, but there is no response, just the steady beating of rain on leaves. She darts through the undergrowth to a fallen tree and climbs up it to get a better view, but as she stares over the mass of low-lying plants, there is no sign of life be it her young or otherwise. Now of no regard to her safety, the mother dinosaur rushes around her territory, calling out in vain hope that at least one of her offspring is still out there. She searches and searches, only stopping when she smells the faint smell of blood. Even as she stands over the area the blood was spilt, the rain is washing it into the soil, and is so diluted she can't even tell if it is from an erictodromius. The light of the day begins to fade away, and she still searches until she finds herself back at the burrow. Still empty. The fern she collected, still untouched. Five of them gone in one outing. Five of them gone, and not a clue as to what happened to them. The mother rests on her nest to catch her breath, but she ends up falling into a deep sleep that lasts the night. As the sun rises, there is movement at the burrow's entrance. The female Erictodromius exits and scans the area, and calls out one last time. It is clear that the entirety of the twelve hatchlings of her second brood have all been taken by predators, including five in one day. The female crawls back into her nest and consumes the ferns that were meant for her young, and then exits the burrow and walks out in the forest to find more food. It is not that she didn't care for her offspring, they were the most important thing in the world to her, but now that they are gone, her instincts have changed from maternity back to self-preservation. To do otherwise would put her at risk and lessen her chances of reproducing again, though that won't be till next year, when she will likely have dug out a different burrow in a safer location. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be looking at the first known burrowing dinosaur, Oryctodromius. Oryctodromius has been found in Montana and Idaho, with its remains dating back to 95 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. It measured 2.1 meters long and stood 0.5 meters tall, and weighed between 22 and 32 kilograms. 
Erectodromius was an Ornithischian, a family that had many small bipedal herbivores built for speed. It is most well known as the first non-avian dinosaur to show evidence of burrowing behaviour. Its name translates to digging runner of the lair. The fossils of an adult and two juveniles were discovered buried together in a 2 metre long and 70 centimetre wide burrow. This shows not only that Erectodromius created burrows, but that it raised its young, and since the juveniles were about 60% the size of the adult, it seems they raised them for extended periods of time. Scientists noted that Erectodromius didn't have many adaptations for digging like a mole or wombat, but its four arms, jaws, and pelvis did have some variations that would have been beneficial for moving soil. It was more like a hyena or rabbit, both of which burrow but are still built for speed. However, since Erectodromius was bipedal, the adaptations it had would not have affected its ability to run. The burrow itself is similar to what hyenas and puffins create. There was a small secondary section of the burrow that was likely not made by Erectodromius, but by some other smaller burrowing animal. This discovery of the first burrowing dinosaur raises many questions of what other dinosaurs may have created burrows, or used pre-existing burrows, like what burrowing owls do today. Two close relatives of Erectodromius, Orodomius, and Zeptyrosaurus have some similar adaptations that could aid them in burrowing, however there was no direct evidence that they did so. It is fair to assume that other families of dinosaur may have performed such behaviour. Ornithischians were a very successful family of dinosaurs, and would have been a common sight across the globe during the entire Cretaceous period. Species like Erectodromius likely adapted burrowing behaviour in order to increase survivability and as shelter for their young, whether it was a common behaviour amongst them is speculative. So, Erectodromius, a species that revealed a whole new dinosaur behaviour not known to science, and that alone is worth the story being told. But what do you think of it? And what species do you think might have burrowed for shelter or possibly for food? Let me know what lesser known species you'd like me to cover in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching.